Alrighty, so we're going to look at some of these functions. We're reasonably good at sketching within our domain between 0 and 2 pi. What this exercise or this question is looking at is it'll often give us a question in this form here. And what does that second part, because the first part of the question we're pretty familiar with, we can do that usually, identify a period, the negative at the front just front means it's flipping. The thing that's different, Matty, is what? It's got a domain, and what does this mean? Yep, so x is an element of negative pi to pi. What do the square brackets mean? It is included. So it's including, saying x is greater than or equal to negative pi, but less than or equal to pi. If it was circle brackets, we would not be including that point. How would we show that we're not including? We'd have an open circle here. Sweet. So what it's essentially asking us to do is to sketch this function in this domain. The first thing I do is draw my full domain. So if you saw me starting this problem, the first thing I'm going to draw my axis. In the middle I've got zero and then at the ends I put negative pi and pi. I then identify the period of my function and I use that 2 pi on b, 2 pi on, pi on uh, 2 pi on 2, which leaves us with pi. I know because it's negative cos, where's it going to start? Down. It's going to start here, correct? There's no amplitude, so I put it at negative 1. If I am one period away from that, where am I going to be? In the same place, correct? So I already know my value for pi and I already know my value for negative pi. How many waves are going to occur between these, these points here? One and then one. So I know that between these two, half of between those, one, if, if these are both troughs, what's going to happen between the two troughs? It's going to be a peak. So I know that at pi on 2 and negative, I'm going to have a value of 1. Cool? From this point, it's probably you're probably able to sketch the function by yourself. What other key features we need to make sure that we've marked on our graph? Max, mins, and? Intercepts. The intercepts going to occur half in between these two, isn't it? So what's half in between 0 and pi on 2? Pi on 4. Pi on 4, so I'm going to have a point here. And then half between pi and 2 and pi is? 3 pi on 4. And I'll do the same on the other side, correct? And then it's just a matter of joining my dots with curved lines. Happy with that? Yeah. So the first thing I do is sketch my x-axis. Then I start identifying my period, identify where it starts, and then I work my way through from there. Cool? Same process. If I'm doing a question on the left-hand side, what's the difference between this one and the one I just did? Yep, it's a sine function. What else? The I've got a, a different period. I want to sketch my function, correct? Should I put my y, my y axis in the middle or not? Where's it going from? Negative pi 2. So should I put my y axis in the middle like I did here? Where should my y axis be? Is that okay? Approximately, is that alright? And I'll put a mark at about negative pi and I'll put a mark here at 3 pi, 2 pi, if I can, oh, probably not right, but anyway. About there. Sweet. I don't need to worry about the top values, but I know my top value is going to be what? What's this value going to be? What's this value going to be? Negative okay, 5. I always like to start my origin if I can. So what does this equal when x equals 0? It is negative 5. It is negative 5. What does this equal when x equals 0? What does sine equal when x equals 0? Sine of zero is? Cool. What about, are there any other values that I know?
Why don't I start, start shoving these in? Which one of these do you think would be the easiest to deal with? Well, let's do with the period first. What's the period of the function? What's the period? 2 pi on? 2 pi on? Slow. What's B? What is B? It is a half. So this equals 2 pi on 1 divided by 1 on 2, which equals. So when you get it on. Thank you, it is 4 pi. So with our sine function, if this, am I going to get, can I see any full periods that are easy to put in there or not? No. No? But I have got a half period. When does the half period occur? 2 pi. 2 pi. So what's this function going to equal when x equals 2 pi? 0. So I've got a value there, I've got a value there. Zay, what do you reckon I should do now? Um, Yep, so which one? What value should I look at? Four. Oh, that means pi. Pi, okay, so I sub pi in. What is five? Sine pi on two. So what's sine pi on two? Sine pi on two is? Pi on ninety. Yeah, it's ninety degrees. Five. What's what is sine again on the unit circle? Y or X? Y. y. What does Y equal at 90 degrees or pi on 2? Oh, 1. But we're going to multiply by 5. Correct? That's what you're going to tell me? That equals 1. 1 times 5 is? 5. So that must be the top there. As you did that one so well, Zave, what's sine 3 pi on 2? Negative 1. Multiplied by 5? Negative 1 by 5. Negative 5. Okay. I don't know what you're Now, I find doing negative sine, negative angles very hard. Do I have to do a negative angle here? Or not? Do I need to sub in a negative pi there? Or do I not need to? No. Why don't I need to? Because of, if I follow this pattern through, where's this one going to go? Yeah. It's going to keep going. You can't change direction, so it's going to keep going that way there. Cool? Happy with that? So where's the best point to start if we can? At zero, work your way across. Complete some of the diagram and then you can keep going from there. Cool? If I was doing this problem, once I've done that, that, and that, I wouldn't need to do any more. Why not? I'm just going to keep following the pattern from that point on. Sweet. So, can I do it? When it's got the domain of 0 to 2 pi, it's just how we were doing it yesterday. Yep. 